It's important to find this balance between wanting to make a positive change and contributing to the group and also respecting the lab's history. So I've talked a lot about how to maintain a good relationship with colleagues, but let's talk about how to maintain a good lab etiquette. Don't be that person who leaves like one mil of a reagent in a huge empty tank. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, my name is V. In this video, I'll be talking about how to maintain a good job etiquette in a research setting, which may be quite different to a corporate setting. I've been working as a research assistant in genetics and stem cells at the University of Cambridge for about one and a half years now, and my lab is currently transitioning into a spin-out biotech company, so I'd say that I have a bit of experience working in academia and industry. In this video, I'll be talking about how to make a good first impression on your first day, how to create a solid working foundation, and also start forming good relationships with your colleagues during your first week, and finally, how to maintain a good job etiquette and network well throughout your contracted period. It is always really important to be punctual on your first day, and in order to do that, you need to have a good night's rest the day before. Wake up earlier, so give yourself about a 30 minute leeway just in case something unexpected happens, like the bus being late or you can't find your building. Next is to dress confidently and comfortably. For your first day, it is always safer to go for something more business casual, and this can be something like a nice blouse or a shirt and trousers and also closed toed shoes. In a research setting, especially in academia, people don't tend to dress very formally. It tends to be just jeans, a sweater, and some sport shoes, but all labs are different so it's always safer to dress a little bit more put together on your first day. After a few days, you can slowly adjust to how relaxed the dress code is. When you arrive at the office, present yourself confidently, and this is good posture and also a smile. Regardless of how serious or friendly the lab group may seem in the beginning, it is always better to bring a level of excitement and also cheerfulness on your first day. And this is especially applicable if you're in a more junior position, because being excited gives the impression that you want to be here and that you really want this job. And when other people can see that, they are more willing to help you out and also want to get to know you better. When you're introducing yourself and also your name, make sure that people hear it right. In my experience, I've met some colleagues and also interns that have arrived and introduced themselves very quietly. And although it's completely okay to be a bit more soft-spoken, when you're introducing yourself, I think it is very important to say it very confidently and clearly. If people just don't catch your name the first few times, they might feel a little bit bad to ask you the third and fourth time. And this might mean that the next time that they want to call you or address you, they might hold back a little bit. Your name is part of your identity and it is something that people should respect. I personally shorten mine to V instead of Vivian to make it easier because the spelling tends to confuse people here. But even then in my first week, people still called me Vi. I didn't really like that so I made sure to correct them on the spot. And it shouldn't be something that you should feel bad about because it's always better to just let them know at the very beginning rather than waiting later on and then it just gets awkward and then people just end up calling you the wrong thing throughout. On the topic of names, it is also really important to try your best to remember everyone else's name. Depending on how big your team is, mine when I joined had about 15 to 20 people, so I made sure to give myself a few days to just get to know everyone and memorize their names. I find that something as simple as remembering someone's name and addressing them correctly can make someone feel really valued. On the theme of people, I personally feel that the most important thing on your first day of work is to try and build a good relationship with your team. Sure, it is important important to read up on your research topic and get to know it better, but life is always easier if you get along well with others. Yes, there will be people that you connect with better and others not so much, and that is completely normal. And one good way to get to know your colleagues on a more personal level is to have lunch with them. On my first day of anything, I usually don't bring my own lunch. If you don't bring lunch on your first day, you can ask your colleagues where the cafeteria is, and I'm sure that they'd be more than happy to show you. And through that, it's also a conversation starter, and you also can get to know each other better during your lunch hour. Hi, I thought I'd just pop in to say that you don't need to have lunch with your colleagues every single day if that's not something that you want to do or if it's just something that feels very forced. Honestly, I have lunch by myself quite a lot as well. Sometimes I just have it by my desk and sometimes I just prefer to go elsewhere to have some alone time and I think that's completely okay. Um, what I'm just trying to say is that on your first day or on your first week, if you just sort of like to get to know your colleagues a little bit better and maybe also just to know a little bit about the lab's history, the department that you're working in, um, and being introduced to new people, I just think that having lunch with your colleagues is a good way to go about it. If you have any dietary restrictions and you're concerned that the cafeteria doesn't cater to you, of course feel free to bring your own lunch. This doesn't take away from the experience at all. So I've mentioned quite a bit about forming a good connection with your colleagues on your first day, but it's also important to form a good connection with your line manager. And depending on how much your line manager interacts with your colleagues, this might differ a little bit. But generally
generally speaking, a good way to form that initial good first impression is to show interest in the project that you will be working on. And one way to do that is to ask your supervisor to send you any papers that are relevant to the project that you're doing so that you can read up on it and better understand the background. So now that you've moved on past your first day, during your first week in general, you will most likely have a bunch of different inductions to attend, whether it be it in person or online. These can be building instructions, how to get rid of biological waste, general health and safety, fire safety, and online inductions for diversity, plagiarism, and learning how to identify scams or phishing. It is compulsory to complete these inductions before starting any kind of lab work, so just make sure that you know the types of inductions that you need to do. So once you finish the legal requirements, i.e. your inductions, and also reading the necessary risk assessments, it is important to be organized from the very beginning. I personally use Microsoft OneNote and also a physical lab notebook to record any of my lab work. Then I create separate folders on my laptop, which is also connected to the cloud, to basically keep a copy of the various protocols that I have, whether it's protocols that have been written from the lab a few years ago or new ones that I've written myself, and a different folder for each different project that I'm involved in. So this can include like PowerPoint presentations that I've created to sort of summarize the project for my supervisor, Excel sheets that contain information for like primers and sequencing results, and general DNA sequencing files. I also have folders for gel images I take because I run a lot of PCR genotyping and restriction digest, so I have a different folder for each month of gel images that I take. And then finally a folder for just general admin stuff. And depending on how big your lab group is, each team may or may not have their own individual inventory. Some labs are more organized than others and if the lab that you're in doesn't currently have a very good organization system, you can always offer to create inventories for liquid nitrogen, glycerol stocks or cell stocks, or just offer to help organize some of the lab consumables. With that being said, keep in mind that some labs may prefer doing things a certain way and there may be a reason as to why. You can of course offer to help and also give new suggestions and ideas, but make sure to just never impose your ideas on them. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't share your ideas for making certain protocols more efficient, it's just more about the timing and the way that you go about it. Make sure that you understand the lab's history before you give too many opinions to reinvent the wheel. Sometimes the lab may be doing things a certain way because there are fault patterns for that certain protocol, or maybe the lab is disorganized because there are many postdocs that have left and come and go, leading to a lack of a centralized system. There may be reasons as to why the lab is the way it is and it is best during your first week to just sort of understand that. It's important to find this balance between wanting to make a positive change and contributing to the group and also respecting the lab's history. With that being said, I'm not saying to literally keep your head down and do exactly as you're told. It's completely okay and in fact it's great to ask questions. It shows that you're interested. If you're not sure where certain things are placed and you're not sure to where to, or if you're not sure where to get rid of biological waste, or maybe how to use certain core facilities or certain equipment, or maybe you're curious as to why they use a certain method over others, it is always just better to ask and get the foundation of things right during your first week. And this last point is kind of a no-brainer, but whilst you're still getting to know people in your team, refrain from participating in gossip. There will always be certain people that you get along with better than others, and although it is good to see the best in others and assume that they won't tell on you, refrain from saying anything controversial about another colleague this early on. I find that generally a drama-free situation is always the healthiest situation to be in, so I prefer to just treat all of my colleagues equally. Of course, there are colleagues that may be a similar age to me that I get along with better and I think it's completely fine to sort of have a work buddy after you get to know them a little bit but I try to keep things as neutral as possible because that's just what has worked for me and, and that's just my preference. So I've talked a lot about how to maintain a good relationship with colleagues, but let's talk about how to maintain a good lab etiquette. You should always keep your bench space clean, take out the trash when your bin is full, and not too full because that's something I'm guilty of, and when you notice certain consumables running low, let your lab manager know, or if you are authorized to purchase certain things, place it on the order system immediately so that you don't end up in a situation where you just don't have any more 200 microliter tips. When deliveries arrive, make sure to put them away as soon as possible, or if something is delivered for a specific person, 
let them know or if it's temperature sensitive just put it in the fridge or freezer for the time being. When you've put the things away make sure to recycle the cardboard boxes or polystyrene boxes depending on how your building prefers to do it. And in terms of using communal reagents if you're the last person using something don't be that person who leaves like one mil of a reagent in a huge empty tank just make up the next batch. And when it comes to cleaning up and getting rid of biological waste if you work on something don't just leave it there for a few days it is good to leave it overnight and then get rid of it the next day but make sure to keep the communal spaces clean and not just a bucket of vercon that may easily spill over. And finally if you do any tissue culture work and you're sharing a hood with someone else be sure to ethanol spray before and after each use to avoid any cross-contamination. So those are some general wet lab etiquettes but when you're working on a project it's important to keep a good record of what you've been doing. I personally use Microsoft OneNote to keep track of my daily tasks. For example if you thaw a vowel of something make sure to keep track of the date that it was thought and also the name so that if there's anything wrong with it in the future you know where to go back from and know not to use that same batch of cells. In my opinion one of the most valuable things I'm getting out of my current research assistant jobs is the people that I'm meeting along the way. My biggest biggest advice is to network well, be open to meeting people from other groups and also nourish your relationships with your colleagues. Even if you're an introvert very much like myself, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone can really Really benefit you in the long run. If I'm being honest, the hiring process is largely based on knowing the right people. If you're working in a well-renowned lab or a big institute, it is the perfect opportunity to expand your network. Speak to different PhD students or postdocs within or outside of your lab to get a feel of the research that they are working on. Take the opportunity to attend various seminars or conferences hosted by your department. This gives you insight into a range of scientific topics and enhances your ability to think like a researcher. And who knows, you might even come across a group that you really want to work with in the future. As I've probably mentioned in some of my other videos, never burn bridges. I wouldn't really call it fake or pretending to like someone else when you don't. At the end of the day, you just need to be professional in a work setting regardless of which sector that you're working in. And you never know who might be able to connect you to the right opportunities in the future. So it's always better to just keep your options open anyway. And that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in videos like these, feel free to like and subscribe as it would really help me out. I also have an Instagram account called Biomed with V where I post more short form content. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below or just DM me. And see you in the next video. Bye!